I will forget this horrible incident, she told herself. I will wipe it from my mind, and Benjamin will never have to learn of or share in my shame. Nine months later, the baby arrived, and they were thrilled. Thank you. Um, so I wrote this for Writer's Craft when I was in grade 13, 18 years old. I s decided to set it in the Russian Emancipation Reform of 1861, because as we all know, that is the sexiest time in history. <laughs> so here goes. Prologue. Although it wasn't a long walk from the manor house to her cottage, on that day it seemed an eternity to Sonia Poltava. Her body had never felt so bruised and battered, and she had never felt so used. Pushing open the door to the small cottage, she gingerly peered around. Her husband, Benjamin, <laughs> wasn't home yet. For that, she would be eternally grateful. Sonia looked around her familiar home, and a large tear rolled down, slowly down her smooth cheek. Suddenly, the tears that had been building up since she left the house burst upon her. She sat crouched on the floor, sobbing for lost innocence and lost trust. Sonia took a deep breath and stopped the flow of tears down her face, smoothed out her wrinkled clothes and wiping her face. She tried her best to pull herself together, knowing that any minute, Benjamin would return from the folk meeting. <laughs> I will forget this horrible incident, she told herself. I will wipe it from my mind, and Benjamin will never have to learn of or share in my shame. Nine months later, the baby arrived, and they were thrilled. He had Benjamin's dark hair, Sonia's nose, and enough similarities to pass as their child. The only reminder of the past were the child's slate blue-gray eyes that were so similar to his. But Sonia wanted to forget the horrible past, so she was content to tell and believe the story that the person responsible for his eyes was her grandfather. She cradled her newborn son in her arms and stared lovingly into his tiny face, unaware that a second set of blue-gray eyes were nearby, staring narrowed in a hateful glare at the young mother and her innocent new child. Okay. I need to bridge quickly because I'm going to read another excerpt. So essentially, the kid is Ivan. You, in the next part of the book, he is a grown man. He is living in serfdom. It's a time of rebellion. He wants release from this slavery. He also wants release from a hot house serf named Katrina. <laughs> so there's rebellion. There's sexy things happening. They, uh, it all comes to a head. All the serfs grab their torches and head to the main manor house to Lord Stoikov's to burn down his beloved theater. <laughs> That's where we pick up. Serfs are dancing around the flames. Ivan goes into the house. Not supposed to be there. Doesn't care. <laughs> Ivan headed for the manor house and stole in the front door. He stood for a moment, taking in the splendor of the great columned reception hall. It's so unfair, he thought bitterly. All of this wealth when we live like the animals who farm the land? <laughs> Breaking out of his thoughts, Ivan headed up the stairs. He passed several rooms before he came to one with the door open. There, his back turned to Ivan, standing in front of a window, watching the desecration of his theater, stood the evil Lord Stoikov. Come in, Mr. Poltava, he said without turning around. I've been expecting you to come. Suddenly, he spun around, his narrowed eyes flashing and continued, Oh, you have a weapon. It would seem that I'm at a disadvantage. But they get, then again, perhaps not. <laughs> oh, I'd say so, my lord, replied Ivan sarcastically. I'm dying to give you what you deserve. He raised the knife. As if to emphasize his words, Stoikov raised his hand and said calmly, Not so fast, my boy. Let's talk first about, oh, I don't know, your mother, perhaps? <laughs> Stoikov smiled, his thin lips smiled. Oh, yes, Ivan, I knew her well. Surprising, she was beautiful, much like Katrina, but not as intelligent. <laughs> She let herself be taken advantage of in the hopes of a better life. Of course, that was naive of her. Why would I, what would I do with a peasant wife or mistress? All she ended up with was a bastard son. But Benjamin was devoted to her and always believed you were his son. And then when your mother died, he did his best to raise you. Stop, screeched Ivan, lunging at Stoikov. His knife held at his throat. You liar, you're lying, and I'm going to kill you for it. Oh, come now, Stoikov replied calmly, his eyes showing no emotion. Would you kill your own father? <laughs> Darth Vader much? 
Ivan froze, his knife suspended above the evil lord's heart, then stood up slowly, his face shadowed with confusion, and dropped the knife. Turning, he stumbled out of the room and right into Katrina. She was standing there, her hands clenched at her sides, her eyes cold. You proclaim yourself a fighter of evil repression in front of all serfs, Ivan, she spat at him. You couldn't even kill him and set us free. What is it, loyalty? I detest what you've done, Ivan. He opened his mouth to protest, but Katrina stormed past him into the room from which he'd come. As he ran down the stairs, he heard Katrina saying, Lord Stoikov, I've decided I do want to marry Nikolai as soon as possible. I can't read anymore, I'm out of time. But uh, spoiler alert, uh, Katrina and Ivan end up um, happy, they're together. At the end, she kisses him on the nose, which just goes to show you that teenage girls can write about history, they should not write about romance. Thank you. (laughs) 